Let's talk about the C200 in 2023. The Canon C200 is a staple workhorse of a cinema camera, but it's old. It was released back in 2017. Where did you dig up that old fossil? Still, that didn't stop me from buying this one this year. I'm guessing you're watching this video because you're thinking about buying one as well. And since you're probably trying to convince yourself that it's worth it, if you can't find one of these for around two grand, I would save your time and go for something like a R6 Mark II, honestly. Here's why. Let's look at the image quality options. The C200 shoots 4K24 raw light. And whenever I refer to raw for the rest of the video, I'm referring to the raw light. There's technical differences, so I just wanted to get that out there. So the C200 has an 8.85 megapixel Super 35 sensor. Now, if you're coming from the photography world, 8.85 megapixels sounds really, really low. This is the worst. And if you were looking for a camera that takes super high definition photos, that would be true. But lower megapixel numbers are actually to the benefit of a lot of cinema cameras because it allows you to shoot in low light and receive less noise. And in my experience, the C200 is pretty dang good in low light. If you throw a little bit of noise reduction on this thing, you can crank that ISO number and it still looks pretty crisp. The 200's 4K24 12-bit RAW is really, really beautiful, but it is it's just, just, it's absurdly heavy, like ridiculously heavy. On a 256 gigabyte CFast 2.0 card, you're gonna get 34 minutes of footage. That's it. And each of these cards cost around $150, and you'll also have to get a card reader. So all of these expenses add up. Even though you can get this camera for kind of cheap, you're gonna have to kind of supplement it with these cards if you wanna shoot the high quality codecs. The edit workflow with the raw footage is also kind of a nightmare because for one, it takes up just so much space. So if you're trying to store a larger project, you're gonna need terabytes and terabytes of footage storage, but because it's so heavy, it's very labor intensive on your computer and you're gonna have to work with proxies, which just adds time and headache to the editing process. Really do not underestimate the beast file sizes that this thing puts out. If you don't have a powerful editing computer already, forget about it, just forget about it. Now you can choose to film in non-raw codecs, it'll just write it to an MP4 if you want, but this limits you to 8-bit color, which means less dynamic range and a less professional looking image. It's fine for things like YouTube videos, but for professional footage, I would stick with the raw codec and the 12-bit. The C200 does do 60 FPS raw, which gives you some solid slow motion footage, but it will limit you down to 10-bit on the raw which is still a really nice looking image, don't get me wrong. One last thing, you can shoot 120 FPS slow motion on the C200, but it limits you to 1080p resolution, which doesn't cut it for professional shoots nowadays. Getting great footage is awesome, but it's only one part of the picture. You also need awesome music and sound effects to soundtrack those cinematic shots that you're getting with the C200. That's where today's video sponsor, Epidemic Sound, comes in. Epidemic Sound is the online library where I source all of my music and sound effects for these videos and my client production. Now, whether your thing is lo-fi or reggae or hard rock, Epidemic Sound has it all. They have over 40,000 songs and over 90,000 sound effects in their library, so there is no lack of high quality music there. And the best part of it is Epidemic Sound is offering a 30-day free trial to anybody. I have a link in the description down below. This allows you to use Epidemic Sound fully to its full potential and post videos with it for 30 days without paying at all. And at the end of the 30 days, if you feel like you don't want to continue your subscription, well, any of the videos that you posted with Epidemic's music while you were on your free trial remain copyright free. So there's really no reason not to try it out. I love it, I use it personally, so I recommend it to you guys as well, whether they're sponsoring the video or not. At least check it out, I've got the link in the description below. Thank you to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. Now let's soundtrack some more of this awesome C200 footage. The C200 has a classic full-size cinema body with button mapping functionality, full-size XLR inputs, an electronic viewfinder, and built-in ND filters. Personally, I prefer the ergonomics of cinema cameras. Even though they're bigger, they feel more solid, more stable, and just more rugged when I'm out in the field. It's great for run and gun. I don't feel like I have to baby this thing. It also presents a more professional image when you take a camera like this to a client shoot versus a camera like this. And I don't care what anybody says, client perception is important because you want to look like you're worth the amount of money that they're paying you to be there. I mean, we gotta look legit, man. So who is the C200 for 
here in 2023. Assuming you can get the camera for two grand or around that, these are my thoughts. If you are a content creator, like a YouTuber or a podcaster, forget it. Go for like a mirrorless hybrid, something like the R6 Mark II. Those files are so much easier to deal with and you don't need raw functionality anyway. Now, if you're looking for a camera for client productions, there are two groups you might be in. The first is that you're a filmmaker who's already invested in Canon's gear, meaning you have a bunch of EF mount lenses. And you're really just looking for a full-size cinema camera that has that rugged look and all those full-size inputs. The C200 will never overheat on you, it looks the part, and it will shoot that beautiful, albeit large, raw footage. If that's the sort of thing you need, I recommend this camera. However, if you're just starting a company or you don't have a backlog of Canon lenses, then I cannot recommend the C200 as a first production camera. You would be better served investing in a mirrorless hybrid or even getting into Sony cinema lineup. Maybe starting with the FX30, which shoots 10-bit and 16-bit raw, all at $1,800 new. That's just my opinion. Do I actually regret buying the camera? No, not really, but I do most of my shooting on my Canon R6. If you wanna see what I think of that camera nowadays, you can check out that video over there.